Tim Rickman and you're watching the video instructions for how to fold my origami fruit fly. This model is based on a 32 by 32 grid, so if you're folding along you'll need that now. For this demonstration I'll be using a piece of 8.5 square 20 pound printer paper, but if you're using two sided paper you'll want to start so that the paper is positioned with the color you want the wings to be face down and these outside creases should be mountain folds. We're going to begin by adding a pleat down the center of the model. So start by folding the model in half. The central crease should already be a valley fold. And we're going to reverse fold the crease that runs adjacent to that central vertical crease. And now we're going to bisect the pleat that runs adjacent to that central crease by bringing that next folded edge that we've just reversed fold to the center folded edge, like this. Carefully aligning the folded edges. Okay, unfold. We've got the right side. Now we want to repeat that on the left. Fold the model in half, reverse fold the crease that's adjacent to the central crease, and bisect the pleat that runs adjacent to the central crease by bringing those new folded edges and matching them to one another, like so. Now unfold, and you should now be able to create a pleat in the center of the model <clears throat> that's exactly as wide as all of our other rows are. And I'll show you what that looks like from the edge here. Okay. Now the second crease past this central pleat should be a mountain fold already. Go ahead and reform that and push it down away from the center line. And do the same thing on the other side. Mountain fold, pleat down away from the center line. <clears throat> Next, we're going to be working along the bottom, and I'll position the paper like this to show you what it now looks like from the edge. We have our pleat that we made down the center, and then these pleats next to it. What we're going to do now is reform this mountain fold from the corner, and where it meets this pleat we've just made in this last square we're going to make a diagonal crease just like that. And repeat that on the opposite side. Where it connects to this pleat we've just made make that a diagonal fold. Now go ahead and unfold everything. And what we should have now are two diagonal creases that end 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That terminates at where the 12th vertical crease meets the bottom raw edge of the paper and it moves up and away from center. Same thing on the opposite side. 12 vertical creases over where that hits the bottom raw edge. Now we're going to use that reference point to create a reference line that travels up three over one, up three over one, up three over one. You can draw this line, you can make a crease, or You can just remember where it is. Well, we're going to build a series of diagonal folds that branch off from this reference line. We already have our first diagonal crease here. We're going to come back the other way through the box above it from that point to where it would meet the uh, top left corner of that box, but we're going to stop halfway through, which is also 
on our reference line. From that point, we're going to move diagonally up and away from center to the bottom of the next box over. So we have a box here. And we want to create a line that moves from that point to that bottom horizontal crease of that box. And now from that point back to our reference line and our reference point of three up and one over. So that's what that should look like. Now we're going to repeat that pattern two more times for a total of three along our reference line. So diagonal through that box, diagonal half to the reference line, from that point over to the bottom of this box, and then back up to our reference line, diagonal, half, bottom of the box, reference point. Now we're going to create one more diagonal and then one more on top of that that goes all the way through diagonally this time and then continue that diagonal down through the corners of all these boxes until it reaches a position of two spaces above the bottom corner. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, now we're going to fold those. We already have our first diagonal and you're just going to pinch those creases. Where you have this diagonal and this half diagonal, you don't have to fold the reference line. You can if you want to, but you do need to fold it between the diagonals of the next space. And when you're forming these creases, you're just making tiny pinches in the paper. You want them to be accurate, but you don't have to um, get out an electron microscope or anything to measure them out. Just make sure they're pointed in the right direction. When we go to collapse this part of the model, it's going to cooperate with you if um, you've been fairly accurate. Okay, this pinch all of these diagonal folds and these top diagonals and the diagonal that tracks back to the edge of your paper like so. And you want to repeat that on the opposite side of the paper. So find your diagonal 12 lines over where that meets the bottom edge. Move up three and away from the center one up three, over one, up three, over one. You can just remember where that line is. If that's easy for you, you can draw it or you can fold it if you want. Diagonal, half diagonal, bottom of the box, reference line. Continuing on, diagonal, half, bottom of the box, reference line, diagonal, half, bottom of the box, reference line. And now one diagonal through that box, diagonal through that box, extending all the way to the edge of the paper to a position of two spaces above the bottom point corner. And to show you again what it looks like to crease these, should give credit where it's due. I borrowed this technique of collapsing an insect abdomen from Robert Lang's model Cicada Nymph. It shows up in other insect designs. Goliath beetle for instance. It's a very clever way to create a segmented abdomen. And 
and these crease, this long diagonal is going to help us form the wing. Also, you want to remember your three points along your reference line for those as well. All right, now we're going to bisect some of these pleats, but just in between the lines that we've just folded. We're going to bisect the second pleat, leaving the first one untouched. So through the center of the second, the third, leave the fourth, go through the fifth, the sixth, leave the seventh, go through the eighth, and the ninth. And we'll bisect those similarly to how we created our pleat down the center of the model. You just make mountain folds on either side of it and bring those folded edges together only in between the creases that we've already made. Okay. So that's the second pleat bisected in half. Now the third. Skipping the fourth. Fold in half the fifth pleat. Sixth. Skip the seventh. Do the eighth. And finally, the ninth. It also helps to reverse fold the pleats, the bisection of the pleats you've just made, like so. <clears throat> This type of a model is something I call open sequence. It's different from the kind of origami where you fold one step after another until it's finished. What we're doing is creating a series of creases that are going to help us collapse the model down. And there are different ways to achieve that crease pattern so it's not step by step. Okay, we have all our creases for the abdomen. Before we collapse that down though, we're going to create some of the creases for the legs. That'll make it easier for us later. We need to find the halfway point between the side corners. And an easy way to do that is just to fold the model in half like this. Okay. Now we have the halfway point, and we're going to create a diagonal crease here two, three, four, five, and then turn back this way and go three, one, two, three, turn again, go three, one, two. Three, turn back the other way, go three, one, two, three, down again three, one, two, three, and back down to the edge of the paper through five. One, two, three, four, five. Let me show you what that looks like in pencil. So we've gone from our halfway point between our corners through five, back up three, 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 and then five. And it looks something like a squished heart or something. I don't know. Okay. Next, you want to find the top corner and move two spaces down. And Make a diagonal that travels through one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now move from the top corner over ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
two, three, four, five, six. So this diagonal should touch this diagonal uh, one before there should be one segment left over there. And now we're going to, from our position of 10 over from the top corner, again, down one, two, three, four, five, and six to the central crease. And you're going to repeat all those on the opposite side. So find your central crease along the edge. Should be one, two, three, four, five. Back up three, one, two, three, down three, one, two, three, one, two, three, back down three, one, two, three, and back to the edge through five. One, two, three, four, and five. So again, we have that same shape on the opposite side. Move two down from the top corner and make a diagonal that goes through five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. Ten across from the top corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You should be on a, mount, a valley folded pleat crease there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Something's wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four. One, two. Nine, ten. I done wrong. No, no, no. That's correct. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now from that space, ten over. One, two, three, four, five. Six to the center of the model. All right, this is what it all looks like now. And we're going to collapse down the abdomen now. So <clears throat> we first need to reform our pleats that we made at the beginning. Two away should be a mountain fold. Press away from the center line. And you want to hold your paper like this. Reform that mountain fold here. And what we're going to be doing is using these lines we've made. You see how there's an apex to this where these two diagonals come together that's off center a little bit. We're going to form a point that will push up into one of the pleats along the bisections we've made, like this. And you're fan folding these pleats here, mountain valley, mountain valley. So you get one corner started and then you start over on the other side, mountain fold, reform that first diagonal we made. Start to form this point which you can then pinch this pleat and now you can lay it down across the top. So this is what it looks like now. We continue on with that. <clears throat> I'm going to fold your pleats down the top here like this. And your next one is a diagonal fold. Push up into that corner and back the other way. up into the corner and once you have that started you can gently pull that pleat down 
and rest it across the top like that. Now it looks like this. Okay, and continue on. This is tricky, but once you get the hang of it, <clears throat> This one. It helps if you start this crease here and then push from underneath and angle this one up into that corner. Maybe push from behind a little bit as you angle that pleat like that. On the other side, push the corner of the apex of that pleat into the pleat there. And once you have both, you can push them down. <coughs> Continue on. Our next one is on a 45 degree angle. Those are a little bit easier. Just finding the top of that point and pushing it into the pleat. Pinching it on the top and pushing from behind underneath here. It might help to have a shaping tool for this part. Here, find that last point. into that, the underneath of that pleat. Pinch that up. And we only have one more 45 degree angle here. Push into that from behind and the other side. <clears throat> like so. And you cross the top. Now fold down. Now we should have this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sort of pleats along the back there. And it looks like this from the side. Okay. And then from the other side. All right. And you should be able to lie it down like this. Now what we're going to do <clears throat> is fold through this diagonal, long diagonal for the wing. So this first pleat just gets folded down like this and then we start with a mountain fold on the bottom of that diagonal and then box pleat this fan folding these longer pleats along the edge here as we go. So we're just creating a flap that will later become the wing. And then fan folding these pleats down along the length of the remainder of the paper to make a flap that looks like that. And do the same thing on the other side. Skip these first two in the corner. First, be mountain, valley, and so on. Arranging these pleats so that they lie down. like this now. All right, next we're going to create two diagonal creases here and here through these boxes here by taking, holding the paper, these layers here and pushing them over diagonally so that these 
edges match up along those back folded edge. Press that down like that. And again on the other side, find the center of all these pleats. Pull down through all these layers, creating a diagonal like so. Okay. Now we're going to reverse fold, gathering up all the creases behind them like so. And then reverse folding that diagonal, pressing down as well on the other side. Gather up the pleats behind it and fold down through that diagonal through all those layers. And then that next horizontal crease you want to be a mountain fold going across. Now we're going to make two more diagonals here, one there, and then one on the opposite side. So, continue to press that down, making a diagonal through that box there. Okay, and on the other side, like so. Now we have sort of this larger rounded off pleat coming off the back. <clears throat> like that. What we need to do now is underneath that new large pleat we've made, we want to reverse fold this crease that's now a valley. And then reverse fold the ones adjacent to it so that they are valley folds. And the best way to do that is to start the crease that's a valley fold into a mountain in the very center by pressing behind it like this and pushing it out and pinching here and then walking it out to the edge trying to collapse down the ones to the side of it into valley folds and then uh, these layers here push with a shaping tool up to help that to form correctly. Now this bit of paper here needs to wrap around the underneath of this. So push up from behind and push it into that corner. And then maybe give another little push from here so that you have this nice V of paper hugging this new small pleat you've just created underneath it. Do the same thing on the other side. Get this going in the direction of a mountain fold. Find these pleats on the edge and push up to train them to a mountain. Make sure the pleats on the other sides of them are turning into valley folds and then press up behind the paper so that this excess here wants to hug around and make a V shape around that new tiny pleat you've made. And you just want it to be tidy and not too messy. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not aesthetically, you will never see that little V of paper I'm talking about. It just needs to be able to lie flat. All right, now the reason we've done that is because we needed to get that bit of paper out of the way. What we're going to do now is take this longer flap and you see this diagonal here. It should be a valley fold in this corner. We're going to hold the paper here and hold this flap here and fold this flap down along that diagonal, creating a mirror image of that diagonal underneath here. So it just folds these layers down so that they're now parallel along the side. And you see this pyramid here. We're going to mountain fold here and valley fold here and here and push this edge, you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment, so that it rides in that crevice. So make 
the middle of that pyramid of valley fold, start to push it up into that crevice there. And especially if you're using a thick piece of paper, it's not going to want to stay there, and that's okay. We'll fix that later with shaping. Um, it also creates this kind of flap right here. And you can kind of hold on to the paper like that and just press everything down uh, just so that you're training the paper to go the right way. Like I said, if you release this, it's going to kind of kick out to the side, and that's fine. Uh, we'll shape that up later. So again, you find this crease here, hold on to the paper, and then fold these layers down like that. You'll now have this pyramid shape above here. You're going to push this as a mountain fold so that it rides into that crevice here. Okay, so push it up and over and in there. You're going to fold that down. If uh, your paper bunches up like it is here, you'll just need to kind of convince it that it needs to be going that direction, like so. Okay. Okay. Now, as you can tell, those are going to be the wings later. We'll shape those later. They can remain like these flaps for now. All right. <clears throat> Next, what we're going to work on, oh, let's see, is the rest of the abdomen. I mean, uh, the thorax, rather. And the way we need to do that is to open up a bit of the model we've already made. And we're going to start looking at these creases that we've pre-folded here. So just slightly open up the model here. Um, this is all going to go back together a lot more easily now that uh, we've pre-folded it. What we're going to do is find the bottom of this diagonal, make a mountain fold, valley fold, and box start to box pleat this. Okay, so we come up against that corner, and now we turn back the other way. You want this top here to be positioned so that it has three pleats, three folded edges on top of each other, and then the top of our pre-folded crease, that diagonal's kind of poking in the corner up there. And you want to, as you formed the abdomen, you also you want to pinch at the top push in from behind and push that corner into that, making this uh, a mountain fold on the top here. And you can continue some of these um, diagonal folds on just to kind of help you uh, help you out there. This is going to be folded over. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to go too far down. You just turn the model over and repeat that on the other side. I didn't draw them in here, but you should have these folded. Um, you want three pleats, three folded edges here. You're going to start that diagonal that's halfway between the corners. One. Valley fold. Mountain fold. All we really need right now is for the model to look like this kind of thing. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to sink the corners of this flap. So tuck the corner, find the center of all these pleats, open it up a little bit here, and then push this down, those three layers of paper along that diagonal on either side and just push those pleats into there so that the thorax is rounded off on the top and the bottom see like this <clears throat> and the other the other side as well go so in between this push this paper down into that 
Okay, there we are. All right, so uh, in the next segment, I'm going to be working on the eyes. Um, so you'll need to actually unfold everything that we've done so far. It's going to come back together a lot easier now that we have everything trained the way it's supposed to go, but carefully undo all of this. <clears throat> carefully pull apart those pleats and flatten out the model. And then <clears throat> in the next section, we're going to be working on the eyes, which will be in this area here. Okay.